this change should not be considered as a coup d'etat in a, I mean, a third world country. I mean, so this is the image of America and the responsibility of America, whether when they come to a deal, when they promise and when they, uh, uh, I mean, uh, commit themselves uh, to a deal, this is something that the others, the other uh, presidents and the next president should do it. So uh, we know, we acknowledge the president of the United States and this administration for uh, implementation of this deal. And I think that uh, it, it's also important for them not to give such an image of themselves. Now, according to Secretary Kerry from the United States, at least there are 50 to 100 billion U.S. dollars of uh, frozen funds should be, in a way, uh, provided to Iran as a result of this deal. How much has been done already? Well, we have these assets, but the problem is that uh, transferring in the banking system is not totally possible. Yet. The United States and the other parties should do I mean, their commitments. This is only one area. The other area is about uh, something included in the deal. For example, the purchase of a heavy water coming from Iran by United States and some of the other countries. At this moment, we understand one Democrat senator in the U.S. block the bill of energy in which includes this specific clause of purchasing heavy water from Iran. What do you make of this latest development? What, once again, can Iran do? Really, uh, we think that uh, the government of the United States is responsible for carrying out this deal. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, there are uh, still there are some circles in the United States that try to blockade and not to permit that uh, this uh, deal can be implemented. Mm, I think the, uh, the selling of this heavy water was a part of this commitment and uh, we were uh, committed to uh, make available this heavy water in the market. So now, because of the quality of this heavy water, one American company has come and, uh, I mean, uh, uh, purchased this. So uh, the other parties can do the same. But uh, I think this is the responsibility of the government, of the, I mean, U.S. administration, to solve the internal problems and uh, to manage these differences. But what about internal reactions from your own country? I mean, after all, this is considered to be one of the biggest deals for decades for Iran. Uh, and people are expecting funds to be unfrozen, more interactions with the rest of the world, more business opportunities. What would this rather slow process of implementation mean for your domestic constituency? Despite all these expectations from the, uh, the negotiation team and uh, the normal expectation of the people that they should feel their, I mean, tangible results of lifting of sanctions, um, I think uh, in our people there is such an understanding that uh, they give this time and opportunity whether the other parties, especially the United States, is a, I mean, credible party that uh, in the future you can rely on its uh, uh, agreements. After more than 10 years of Iran being cut out from the rest of the world uh, by sanctions, this is going to be a very slow process at the very beginning. But I would also assume, when looking at politics elsewhere, this would mean certain pressure for both uh, your president, who has been very vocal in the negotiation, and also for the foreign ministry, uh, who have been, including you yourself, Mr. Vice Minister, and with the Mr. Minister, uh, working very hard over the years for this deal. Eventually, the negotiation was done by you guys. So what would that mean, politically, pressure? If we consider as a whole this process, I think uh, before we come to a I mean, final judgment, it's better to give time whether all the pressures, encouraging of the other countries and the credibility of the countries in keeping their promises works or not. But I'm sure that uh, uh, 
uh, even in the United States, uh, uh, there is a tendency, there are some tendencies that uh, to not to allow these uh, pressure groups or some hardline circles to, I mean, uh, overcome or to uh, show that, to prove that diplomacy does not work. Mm, very interesting. The nuclear development, of course, in Iran earlier has a lot to do with how Iran sees its own security and also its own economic development. But of course, after the agreement was signed, Iran should carry out its own commitment. On the other hand, the question has arised, which is how Iran is going to have a new set of strategies to guarantee its security in the future, not only in the region, but also globally as well. Mm, I think that uh, the uh, issue of security for uh, defining our nuclear program was a fabricated one. I mean, they tried to show that Iran pursuing a military one, but it was not correct. Exactly at the end, uh, they came to this conclusion that we had a peaceful one. And uh, so uh, now maybe the new threats uh, are uh, in a different manner. Now extremism and terrorism are threatening the security of the world. So we need a collective effort for fighting against terrorism and extremism. Mm, uh, I think that uh, mm, now uh, Iran has shown that even when it had uh, its own nuclear program, it was something related to, to the economic development. It was something that uh, returned to uh, Iranians' uh, feeling that uh, sometimes they have to stand on their own feet. They need a kind of independence and self-reliance in very important uh, and, and sensitive issues. And uh, sometimes, as you at the beginning of our interview, the reaction of some countries to, these, to this deal, maybe it proves that uh, still Iran needs further guarantees from the other sides for, I mean, uh, entering to uh, some security arrangements. But uh, we have uh, carried out a uh, stand, uh, stand and position that uh, we think that legitimacy comes from our people when the people of a country are supporting their own uh, government. It's the best guarantee for their security. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think that we have shown a genuine um, effort for uh, eliminating the legitimate concerns in the security, I mean, in the framework of security. The Iran agreement was considered a very successful one after a long time of negotiations. And many compare that, even though there are so many differences, with what's going on now on the Korean Peninsula, uh, the nuclear crisis. From your perspective, how do you see these two case studies? What can be some of the things that you and other partners achieved that can be of inspiration for the other case study? It's very difficult to, I mean, compare the cases exactly. But uh, I think as a whole, it's important that we give this opportunity for talks and dialogue. This is very important. Uh, at least in the Iran nuclear program, it worked. And we hope that uh, by uh, full implementation of this uh, deal, uh, everybody, uh, I mean, completely feels that it works. This is something, this expectation. But uh, uh, we need really a world free of uh, nuclear weapons. This is something that uh, we pursuing, and we, this is our policy that in all the parts of the world, we need to get rid of uh, nuclear um, weapons, uh, as well as uh, mm, the external intervention. We think that uh, sometimes, uh, and always, this is our policy, that uh, external intervention makes the situation more complicated. 
and uh, we need uh, that uh, to stop these types of in in interventions or that some countries uh, think that they have the right to intervene in any parts of the world. So by, uh, I mean, removing, eliminating these two concerns and to uh, work in parallel on these two issues, I'm sure that uh, maybe in the uh, Korean Peninsula we'll, we'll be able to find a political solution.